I broke through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump I back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample-tastic, flows ekphrastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 267. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to talk about Red 2, mm -hmm. which is coming out this Friday, July 19th. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Nailed it. Yeah. Um, this is the sequel to Red, mm -hmm. based on a graphic novel by Warren Ellis and Cully Hamner. Mm -hmm. Kind of disappointed it's not called Red Two, even Redder, or you know, I'm better surprised dead they didn't than go. Red. Yeah, that would be like, good. I mean, I there's like so that. many you could go with. Yeah, I like better than Red or Red Two T Double O. Oh, mm -hmm. and then make yeah. T W O stand for something else, like, yeah. like retired, extremely dangerous. The world order, dun dun dun. Yeah. Like some, I mean, it's not that hard. Come yeah. on, people, yeah. think about this. This is Hollywood. You yeah. got to have snappy sequels. Yeah, I mean, especially you know, if you had an original that was an acronym. Yeah, so. already working on the next one, and you know what it's called? Red Three. Hey, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. I'm on it fire is, today. It is actually sadly build as Red Three. Um, to put that in perspective, also though, mm -hmm. the original screenplay was written by brothers John and Eric Hober. Yes. Which. You know, they did a good job with the first one. Yes. I thought the first Red yes. was very entertaining. A story about, for those who aren't familiar, yes. a story about a group of retired spies who mm -hmm. are sort of... Like CIA hitman operative thing yes. people. Yes, were yeah. brought uh, back under um, the... Purvey of the government. Purvey I guess, of the government when they're it. sort of like framed for a crime. Yes, yes. And they have to sort of clear their names. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it's led by was it uh, Bruce Willis, John Malkovich, Morgan Freeman, and Helen Mirren were yes. the group. Yes. This time or the original time. Sorry, correction. Yes. So that they did a good job with that script, John yeah. and Eric Hober. Yeah. Um, but they're also but, credited with Whiteout, mm -hmm. which was also a comic transition. Um, Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know that. from Greg Rucka, okay. who's a uh, local Northwesterner oh, nice. from Portland. Nice. Uh, I'm sorry that your uh, original work got so destroyed in that movie yeah. by Kate, I mean, with Kate Beckinsale. You know, it's I, I would say it's awful, but it's just, <laughs> it's it's sort of blah. Mm -hmm. It's just really kind of blah. Yeah. But that's really not the problem. No, on it's their, really not. The problem is Battleship. Yes. So you have the people who wrote Battleship from mm -hmm. last year bringing... Their newest creation. Yes. And you know, they did a good job with the last one, yeah. but all indications about this one are that this one is just more, and a lot of the reviews thus far have been that it's less. Yes. So, now, as, as I think we were talking about off camera, the yes. classic uh, sequel sophomore slump woes of just like, hey, if everything we did the first time was successful, we'll do it bigger, bolt more, flashier, bring in more stars, it'd be, yeah. and then it'll it'll somehow be twice as successful. Which which is an interesting point, and let's talk about that right now. You know, the first one was really sort of that four core cast mm -hmm. members, and then Carl Urban was yes. sort of the guy chasing him, and then Mary Louise Parker was, was Bruce Willis's yeah. love interest. Yeah, to be his like normal life. Yes. Connection yeah, exactly. Kind of She's, yeah. She gets swept up in this crazy mm -hmm. world. And falls for it. And so this time we've lost Morgan Freeman. For those who haven't seen it, I'm not going to say why. Yeah. And then for whatever reason, Carl Urban isn't back, except probably that he's much more famous at this point and harder to probably. get to sign yeah. on. Yeah. Even though and they would... probably would have been like, hey, you want to be in a cameo? And he's like, I'm busy doing Star Trek 2 and Dread. So yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of a shame because he... Hey, guys who wrote Battleship, no, I don't want to be... <laughs> it probably would have been written a much more around his character this mm. time around if he had been willing to yes. come back because his character was so important in the first time. Direct, yeah. And so we've lose, lost those two, but this time we have, let's say, Anthony Hopkins. Mm-hmm. Stepping up as the villain. Gotta love Anthony Hopkins. Yep. Great, great actor. You mm -hmm. know, one of the best ever. I yeah. Mean, talk Putting about him and Brian Cox in the same screen, which is weird since Brian Cox played Hannibal yeah. Lecter in Manhunter. And let's also note, hey, well, I mean, obviously, Anthony yeah, and Hopkins Anthony played, Hopkins played but Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter considered the greatest villain of all time. So you got the best villain being played by, or the yeah. guy who played the best villain ever playing a villain here. That seems like a good idea. Might be. Might be not bad. Hoping, idea. Yeah. yeah. You have uh, Catherine Zeta Jones, Zeta Zeta Jones. Mm -hmm. Dipping as, beneath uh, lasers. <laughs> that would be awesome. Maybe they, if they bring that back, Ooh. I will absolutely go see all of that. But uh, no, she's playing Bruce Willis's former love interest, yes. aka I guess considered his kryptonite, as they uh, call it. Okay. So you got the love triangle with uh, yeah. Catherine Zeta-Jones, Mary Louise Parker, and Bruce Willis. To be fair, Red is a DC comic. 
Yes. So, you know, at least they're staying in their own universe yes. like saying it's good yes. tonight. <laughs> yes. That's true. Good call. So, yeah. Very well, uh, uh, well played. At least it's not like some, a Marvel property no. saying something's script tonight. But you also have also a, a slew of other people. You have um, Neil McDonough. Mm -hmm. You've got to love him. He's always, you know, he's great as both a villain and a hero. Yeah. I mean, think Band of Brothers. Great mm -hmm. hero. And he's done stuff like Walking Tall where he's super slimy. Yeah. And then you've got also like, he's not afraid of doing comics. He's done Captain America. Mm -hmm. crying out loud. Yeah. So he's been around. You've got David Thewis from uh, Harry Potter yes, and other stuff right. playing an assassin in his own right, though mm -hmm. I hear it's a very small part as the frog. Ooh, uh, nice name. Not going to spoil as to what that's all and about. Storm Shadow himself. Yes, Byun Byun Hun Lee. Mm -hmm. You know, he obviously a, a superb action actor of himself. One of the few continuity elements of the GI Joe franchise. Yes. One of the few people yes. considered to. But um, <laughs> considered, I, I guess his part in this movie as considered to be the best action sequence in it. I Ooh. guess it takes place in a convenience store. Ah, uh, yes. Because so. I think they go a little bit global with this one. Yes, yeah. very global, yes. Interpol is Which, all I guess, thing. yes, let's talk about the plot of Red 2 for yes. a minute. It is, while well, trying to live a normal life, hmm, sounds familiar from Red 1, <laughs> uh, Frank is notified that Interpol is hunting him. When he tries to clear his name, he is told of a Cold War project to sneak a nuclear weapon into Russia and that it may have been assembled and activated. In order to successfully defuse it, he is reacquainted with the man who helped set up the project who has been confined to a mental hospital and finds himself hunted by Victoria Helen Mirren yes who has apparently left retirement and one of the best assassins in the bin business who I believe is Byun Hyun Lee uh, yes it doesn't right. help that he's also reunited with an old flame who's eager to rekindle their relationship Catherine said a joke yes yes <laughs> so and I believe uh, was it is a uh, Anthony Hopkins is the man who's been confined to the mental ah, hospital, I, I believe. I'm not. Maybe sure. they're trying to keep a twist there. Yeah, Maybe the frog is the one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I th I was, as I recall, that's what it is. But you know, if somebody has better information, feel free to correct it. Not directed by the same director yes, the, as the first one. The first one was directed by Robert Swanky. Yes. Uh, who is out? And I don't know if it was by choice. I have to imagine because yeah. you know, of all coincidences, he he previously directed Flight Plan. He mm -hmm. also directed the Time Traveler's Life Wife, sorry, and he directed Red. Yes. But he also has now directed R.I.P.D., which interestingly enough comes out the very same day. Also right starring here. Mary Louise Parker. Yes, strange coincidence as well. So how hey, does that know? work? I, well, he how? very much liked working with yeah, her. I'm I, sure I he guess brought so. Her in. I just mean in general how to. How does somebody not stop that from happening? It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, probably because they're different studios yeah. and they probably yeah. don't give a fuck about yeah, each other. Yeah, because they honestly. put enough money in. One's a sequel and the other one's a creation of a comic. So as but, far as they're yeah. concerned, even Interesting, though one's yeah. a sequel of a comic creation, yeah, they're both comic based. And uh, R.I.P.D. looks like it's a big budget thing. I mean, you got Ryan Reynolds and Jeff Bridges in it, so yeah. you probably have more relevant current people. Probably. I mean, Bruce Willis. I mean, Bruce Willis has done what in the last few years? A I, good day to die hard. I, I would Expendables say Helen Mirren too. is probably the most uh, current. <laughs> Her and Mary Louise Parker, yeah. probably the two. Yeah, the two of them are probably the most current. Probably people true. In this film. I mean, I guess he. I mean, Bruce Willis has done Looper and Moonrise Kingdom. So yeah, that's, that's positive. But other than that, it's a lot of yeah. <laughs> Uh, but the person who's taking over, Dean Pariseau, I assume? Pariseau. Yeah, I'll yeah. go Pariseau. Yeah, That's Pariseau. what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, directed some stuff that is maybe not horrible to remember. He directed, and one of was really good. Yeah, he directed Home Fries. Decent. Uh, okay, not decent movie. Fun with Dick and Jane. Yeah. It's okay. Not great. And not Galaxy too. Quest. I love Galaxy Quest. Which is awesome. Yeah, it is really awesome. And one of the things that, you know, gives me a little bit of hope about him taking over Red 2 is, you know... Galaxy Quest was a good combination between comedy and action. Yeah, it was kind it was of a very a good, good comedy. It was a good comedy that still had some An flow. An ensemble of, cast. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, maybe the dude has a good idea with what he's doing, but still a sequel, still kind of a rushed sequel. I mean, yeah, you know, hard to say exactly where that's gonna go. I I, I think I mean. I, I, I think the bigger issue is probably the script. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, the guy can yeah, direct... Yeah, the Holdner brothers do not have the best. It, it, it's, just, it's just like amplifying everything from the first one is just not going to make it like twice as good. Yeah. It's, it's, it, you got to, you got to appreciate the nuance that really made the first one work. Exactly. And sort of build upon that instead of just, I mean, if you're ex, I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe he could have rewritten himself or whatever. I don't know. I'm not saying that, uh, Dean Perso is mm. without blame, but you know, 
from all that I've seen of it mm -hmm. thus far, it looks like it's fairly much done in the same sort of vibe as the original, which is yeah. all you could pretty much ask for. Yeah. But and the, the and the original walked a very fine line between being so preposterous, but also not taking itself very seriously. Oh yeah. So there was, you know, it was very easy that it could have gone either way. They could have been too preposterous and taken themselves a little bit too seriously and it would have been lost it all or been too slapsticky. I think it kind of rode that line where the action was ridiculous, but they took it at least serious in while it was occurring. The other thing that I'm just looking at this, I mean, makes me feel like it sort of feels like The Hangover 2 to me. Oh, definitely. In that a sense, it's sort of like mm -hmm. the same general premise. Look, like, yep. we're being hunted again. Yep. We need to prove that we're innocent again. You and know, you know, even though they're again. billing Helen Mirren as like, now she's a, actually a villain this time. I, I'm kind suspicious of, I kind her. of agree that's probably going to go like the first one where she I've, turns at a crucial moment and joins their side and helps them out. I mean, she's, she's a friend of them in the first one. It just feels hard for me to imagine that she's like, like, all right, well, you know, fuck you now, I'm being paid. Yeah, and it's like, I mean, you know, Helen Mirren's character is slightly a threat to Mary Louise Parker's relationship with Bruce Willis in the first one because they, Helen Mirren and Bruce Willis have known each other, so now they've just done that with a whole other actress who's going to do it even more so and not be a friend and be yeah. an actual old flame. So then they're going to go through all of those tropes of Mary Louise Parker and Catherine Zeta-Jones are only going to exist as things for Bruce Willis to own or not to own. I mean, come on. Can't you give him actual, like, why not have Catherine Zeta-Jones be another agent that competed with him? You know, they, I mean. Yeah, I feel like you just so... need to come up with a fresh idea. Like, perhaps they're not being hunted and they're called back in yeah, by I mean, the government because they need their help. Yeah, or maybe they're going after other retired you know, they're sent to go after another retired crew that's turned evil. Like, yeah. I mean, who knows? I, I mean, Warren... It could be like Fast 87 then. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Warren Ellis has done a lot of amazing comic mm -hmm. stuff. And, and even a couple interesting books. I mean, Transmetropolitan Authority, the, the guy has a laundry list of comics that he's a hellblazer he's worked on. I mean, mm -hmm. so many ridiculous, crazy reboots. That dude has some interesting work. You can't tell me you can't find an already... If you're already taking an existing property and you're ma transitioning it to the film and then you're making a sequel, why not take another successful plot arc from that same property? Or how about this crazy idea? You involve Warren Ellis in oh making the sequel. Oh my god! I know. How it's, amazing! Yeah, it's a crazy idea. I bet even Coley Hamner would have some pretty sweet yeah. ideas. To put it into the context, though, in, in terms of this film coming out, the original Red came out Cost $58 million to make, okay. which is a modest yeah, budget in not, Hollywood these days. For an action movie, uh, that's yeah. not crazy. Made $90 million domestically, 200 worldwide, which is it's good, yeah. but not like gigantically successful. Yes. I think it had some success in the aftermarket too, mm -hmm. which is good as well. But I mean, it's not like, I mean, I'm surprised that they've gone to the trouble of already announcing Red 3, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, coming out its opening weekend, it lost to Jackass 3D, which made... $50 million compared to Red's 21 in its opening weekend. And it was huh. also Social Network's, I think, second or third week, okay. and it made $10 million. Okay. Compared to this one, which is coming out against Turbo, yeah. a children's animated mm -hmm. movie, uh, R.I.P.D., yeah, probably sort has a little very bit. similar to Red. Yeah, and that probably has a bigger uh, marketing behind it. Mm -hmm. And bigger names yeah. behind it. Uh, the Conjuring mm -hmm. horror film. Yeah. And Only God Forgives in limited release, which is, was it, Winding Ramps yep. and, and uh, Ryan Gosling's mm -hmm. next film together. And, you know, with based on how it's going, for all we know, Despicable Me 2 could still be in the... It's, it I think it'll be, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's going to be in that and grown list somewhere. Grown Ups 2 probably will be, Ugh. at least, you know, you, you think about it, sort of like, traditionally things lose about 50% <laughs> each week that they're out. And so... Could Pacific Rim be in there too, Spencer? It probably I will. It, I, I mean, want it to be. I think each of those are probably going to be in the 15 to $20 million range themselves because I, so. I mean they'll drop like 50 to 60 percent yeah and then you have like a whole handful of ones so it's sort of like the original made 21 million dollars its opening weekend yeah i i would feel lucky if this one gets around there too i feel like this yeah. is going to be like probably 21 million or less yeah so i, I don't think it, it it's not looking too great for uh red two unfortunately i mean you know red one i think was successful more because it was a surprise yeah. To be honest, I mean... <laughs> I, 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 I mean, even just thinking back in my own sort of perspective mm -hmm. of Red 1, um, 
I remember looking at it and thinking, yeah, that doesn't look particularly good, mm -hmm. but I forget whatever reason. I was sort of like, yeah. ah, I kind of want to check it out. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is actually pretty funny and good. Yeah, like, I think I, I, I don't think I even realized it was supposed to be comedic. Yeah. So I kind of was looking at the action that was being played up as like, oh, great. Another Bruce Willis live free and die hard style situation. Like, why do we need him to be in stupid action? But I caught it, I think, on HBO or something. And I was actually very surprised by how entertaining it was. I thought it would be way less entertaining. I mean, it's one of the few times that Bruce Willis has... I mean, he's still playing an action star, but I think he, this is way more, like, die hard, quippy John McClane than it is the boring, like gruff tears of the sun i yeah. stare and look angry bruce willis of, true. of recent years uh, and, and it's like that's good the first time out but like how many times can you do like yeah uh he he's he's old but he he, he wants to be hip but he's not hip yeah. and he he wants to live a normal life but he doesn't really like it's sort of like like yeah. that, that's that, why things like that exist you need as to comics. evolve you need yeah. to evolve that's why things like that exist as comics comics and television can have static characters that stay the same and run through the, stay the same character and just run through different situations. You can't do that with film as much anymore. You can, you you just you really can't. It's it's where people lose out so much on sequels. They try to make drastic changes, and the, the hero that was before is a villain now. And I mean, it's just. I mean, they're it, like I'm I'm just looking at like things like it's almost exactly the same length. That's both they're both are rated PG thirteen. I mean, it's just. So so much of just going from the original playbook that I just I don't know like I, yeah. I feel like it's just destined for disaster because of that and I mean and who who's the distributor for this is it Legendary or uh, I I think it's Summit now that okay. you mention it yeah I'm pretty sure it's Summit because I do know this is the was, yep, was, Summit Red One was the first uh, theatrical film based on a DC comic that wasn't made by Warner Brothers. That's an interesting point. Yeah, I, I wonder how that is. I mean, I guess I don't know. Maybe I wonder if it is just because it's in the lesser line. So maybe, maybe. Warner Brothers isn't like, no, we have to own that. Like that's a really interesting point. I wonder, like, yeah, because I mean, Marvel got caught up in that in the early days that they were always Spider-Man yep. and stuff like that. So they don't own the rights. Yeah, Spider-Man, Spider X-Men, Sony. Yeah, X-Men is at Fox. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, DC and Warner Brothers. Really, I guess in part because they haven't been super successful. Probably. Um, yeah. But, you know, they really never really were quite as efficient in getting their projects and properties out there mm -hmm. as Marvel and in terms of selling those characters. Yeah. So it's really interesting that, I mean, unless this was done really early on. I, d I can't but imagine. I, I mean, I feel be. like Warner Brothers has owned DC for a long, long time. Yeah. So it's really surprising that they would be willing to give it up unless maybe Summit cut some sweet deal with them where it's like, you have no costs involved with this, but you'll make 25, 50% of the gross or something like probably. that. Probably. They're probably like, hey, we got the Hoobner brothers back yeah. for free because after Battleship, no one will hire them. And so, uh... It's probably <laughs> not totally them. a lie, but yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's tough for me to say that I'm looking forward to, if I were, like, honestly... I'm kind of, I mean, this weekend is kind of a shit fest, yeah. honestly. Like, I guess I'm a little interested in R.I.P.D., but not super interested. Yeah. Men in Black, the afterlife movie. Yeah, exactly. Very much. Again, talking about ripping off a concept, like, that's no better. <laughs> yeah. uh, Conjuring, I just don't like Lily Taylor, but I, it looks kind of interesting. I'm just not a horror fan. I'm not huge in horror. Only God Forgives, like, I like Wendy Renf, mm -hmm. and I like Gosling, but a lot of the publicity about it thus far has been not necessarily positive. The hmm. reviews thus far out of can and stuff were not this positive. And Turbo, like, I like a good animated movie, but, like, a snail who's fast really is not yeah, telling who, me. Who is it's, it? It's Frameworks like, has it made it? Who? Yeah, I believe so. Yes. It's, it's just, like, cars, but with snails. It's, like, yeah, I, it's, uh, it's, it's standard cut-and-paste animated fare. It's, mm -hmm. it's hey, uh, uh, member Avatar? Let's make it uh, with little people, it's call it epic. Way odds are that it's gonna win the weekend. But here's the 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 one scenario that would be true. really interesting and surprising if Pacific Rim comes in number two. The Good Water Mouth leads Pacific Rim to beat a whole oh, onslaught. Of, go out it's and see possible. Pacific Rim, please. People, not gonna go happen. Out and but, see it. You know. See the Pacific Science Center, IMAX 3D. Get your balls blown away yeah. like I well, did. You can also stay tuned and see what my actual review of is. 
read once I go and see it tomorrow. So yes. I'll be writing that up for the MacGuffin mm -hmm. website, which you can check out. And uh, let us know your feedback of Red, Red 2, any mm -hmm. of the actors involved, what you're looking forward to the about Hubner it. Brothers and why they should yeah. not make Red 3. Or why you're not looking forward to Red <laughs> yes, 2. Yes, Might be a good... Uh, There's probably lots of reasons yeah, why probably people are looking. Like, in f for example, what's Red? That would probably be the first question most people would say. Yes. <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. So <laughs> let it be known, and you can let us know at MacGuffin. That's mm -hmm. MacGuff.in. Uh, we're on Twitter at uh, twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast. Yes. Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. Phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.tv. Miro. Roku. Check in and get glue. Get some badges. Tell all your friends that you're watching us. Uh, leave, leave some stars on iTunes yep. and some uh, thumbs and comments on the YouTube. Please do. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.